Reviewing the anatomy of a dried temporal bone can help solidify intraoperative anatomy. Here are the squamosal portion of the temporal bone, the zygomatic arch and the root of the zygoma, the glenoid fossa, the temporal line, also known as the supramastoid crest, the mastoid portion of the temporal bone, and the tympanic portion of the temporal bone. Rotating the bone for a posterior view, the digastric groove is seen. Here's a foramen for a mastoid emissary vein, the spine of Henle, the cribriform area, and McEwen's triangle. The tympanomastoid suture leads to the stylomastoid foramen on the inferior aspect. This is a portion of the styloid process. Also note the digastric groove in its relationship to the stylomastoid foramen. Here's the jugular fossa, the carotid canal, and the bony ridge that separates the two. This is the foramen for Arnold's nerve and for Jacobson's nerve. Now we will rotate the temporal bone to look into the posterior fossa. Here's the junction of the temporal bone with the occipital bone. This is the Petrus pyramid. There's a groove here for the sigmoid sinus. and a fan-shaped groove for the endolymphatic sac. Its apex marks the operculum. The jugular fossa and porous acousticus are also seen. The petrous apex is the tip of the petrous pyramid. Next, we will look into the internal auditory canal. Note that it is oriented with the vertex toward the left side of the screen. We can easily see the transverse crest. The vertical crest, also known as Bill's bar, separates the superior vestibular nerve aperture from the facial nerve aperture. Finally, we have the inferior vestibular nerve and cochlear nerve apertures. Looking into the middle fossa, we again have a view of the squamosal portion of the temporal bone, the squamosal petrous suture line, and the petrous pyramid. Other key landmarks include the arcuate eminence, the groove for the superior petrosal sinus along the petrous ridge, and the foramen for the greater superficial petrosal nerve. The sphenopetrous suture houses the foramen spinosum for the middle meningeal artery. The carotid canal and foramen lacerum are also seen. Looking along the axis of the petrous pyramid, we can see the carotid canal and the bony portion of the eustachian tube and tensor tympani semi-canal.